engage with your audience. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing you should do, but really in the order of how to frame it, you're thinking about your content, you plan out your content. Let's say you, you've gotten to a system where you've now planned out your content, then you still have to go on social media and engage with your audience. Welcome to this week's episode of Beauty Babble. Today, Suzanne and I are talking about social media strategy. We'll break it down to five ways you can improve your social media presence. Hi, Suzanne. And how welcome. are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Good. Suzanne, I know this is a hot topic always. Yes. <laughs> Where do you begin? Good Lord, with all the social media stuff? it's very time consuming. You have to be committed to it, right? Especially if you're trying to promote a business. Absolutely. It is time consuming. I think the, and that's a hindrance a lot of the time is because there's only a limited number of hours that we have. And as estheticians that are doing services or lash techs, beauty professionals, basically you're doing your services all day long. You don't want to spend all night doing your social media. It can be draining and exhausting. So I think having a strategy really helps you be more efficient when you show up online. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Just five tips and ways to enhance what you're doing already. And if you're not doing it, then maybe you can incorporate some of these suggestions into, into what you're doing. Awesome. So, shall I kick us off? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Number one is going to be the obvious, which is content. So high quality visuals and audio. A lot of us have smartphones and I've seen a lot of great quality videos and pictures on social media. I'd say if you're doing a talking video, just ensure that your audio quality is really good because I think, you know, audiences are more forgiving of lower quality visuals than lower quality audio. And with that, when you are posting something where you're talking, always do the captioning on there. You can do that within the, if you're doing it on Instagram, you can do it within the platform. There's third-party apps that will do it for you as well. But that's really important too, because a lot of people actually engage online without any volume too. So it's two-part. If they're listening, they want good audio. Most of the, if they're not listening, they want to be able to know what you're saying and they need captions. And this happened to me last night where I was scrolling quietly and didn't want to have any audio on there, but some, there was a post and I couldn't, I wanted to know what it was saying, but I couldn't because they, right. it was just talking and no captions. Right. And then when it comes, so that's kind of like, you know, quality wise, but mm -hmm. when it comes to what type of content you should post, I would recommend the rule of thirds. You don't want to post everything to be about promoting your business and your services. Book with me, book with me, book with me. It doesn't work because you and I were talking about this. You have to build relationships and you have to build trust with your audience online in order for them to then take that next step to become paying clients. And you do that by providing a variety of content. So I like the rule of thirds. So a third of your content would be educational a third of your content is inspirational or entertaining, and a third of your content is promotional. And that can look something like, you know, educational could be, you know, skincare routines or tips for uh, problem skin, something like that. And you can, in those posts, like mention your services, but I think more importantly, you should mention ways that people can just do it themselves because then it shows you giving and not yeah. always asking for something, you know? And then it also shows your knowledge, no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. exactly. You're, you're become a go-to when somebody has a question about, mm -hmm. about something. Before and after pictures are great because they kind of do the telling for you or you can do like before and after reels or whatever. And then client testimonials as well. Let people hear from the people who've been getting treatments from you. Yeah, we talked about that too. That can be tough to get. So it's like, you can't give up. You just got to keep doing it. And one day they say yes, and you got it. You Oh, because they'll say they'll, they don't want to hurt your feelings, but they'll say, oh yeah, absolutely, for sure. But then they leave or they're gone or whatever it may be, just give them something easier and a different 
different tools if you wish to help them. So the next time you come in, it's like, hey, you know how you said you would do something? Do you mind just doing it here? Or give them a link or give them a piece of paper to write it on. And then you just recapped it, right? Like it doesn't have to be on Google that you screenshot that you got it, right? It can be in any way or 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 verbally record them. A video, yeah. I think a right? video would be great. Yeah. Um, well, and if some people don't want their faces, so audio would be okay too, right? Yeah. I think too, like, I like that idea of like, you like said, give them a piece of paper. You could also just like, if you sign up for, if, I mean, if you don't want them to do it right in front of you, maybe you send them like a survey monkey or something like that, where it's. That's a great one. So that's free. Yeah. And it's anonymous. You can, it could be part of your aftercare for your client. Like, thanks for coming. Your follow up. Uh, a follow-up and it can mm-hmm. be linked to a place where they can leave a testimonial for you. It's a good idea. The time you build relationships with your clients, right? When you have your regular clients, they become, yes. you, you have that relationship. So a lot of times in those cases, it'll be easier. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I hand them a piece of paper to write it on or video. Yeah. So you're not your new people that you exactly. don't yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I think number two is consistency and scheduling. So consistency is key on social media. And that can be tough if you try to be everywhere all the time. So each platform has a recommended number of times you should post a week for optimal engagement with your audience. That isn't always feasible. It's not always attainable for a lot of us. It's a lot. I think more important than how much you post is to post consistently. So if you're going to post every day, you need to post every day, every week. You cannot not do that. So maybe you post three times a week and then you build yourself up. So you have to, rec- you have to understand how much time it's going to take you and set. I will post three times a week. It's going to be say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I will post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then you can plan out your month. Mm-hmm. In doing that, you can then schedule it. I mean, if you have Facebook and Instagram, Facebook within the Meta Business Suite, you can do scheduling. It's within the platform; doesn't cost you extra. Um, if you do any of the other uh, social media platforms, you can get a third-party scheduling app. Some of them are really affordable, so you just kind of have to look around and see which one is going to be um, within your budget and do what you want it to do. But it is going to save you so much time. So what I do in my business, because you know, I do this for work. I pick a day and I do all my filming in one day. Then I pick a day and I do all the creation of the content. So that means writing the posts, editing, all of that for the month. So it's two days out of the month that I'm dedicating to my social media. And then my posts are done. And the only thing I have to do then throughout The month is to engage, which leads us to step three, but I won't get there yet. So I think that in setting a system, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and be more intentional and get better returns. So you're saying set a system up, but you should, I mean, for me, I had to schedule in my week when I did this, right? So then if I knew next week was so busy, just with life in general, it could be family, kids, it could be you're on vacation, like really look ahead. Like when you say a month ahead, that's optimal because then you're done. And once you get into that habit of how it works and and you get better at it, it does go faster, right? Absolutely. And it yeah. takes you time to get to that month ahead. You know, mm-hmm. you'll have to figure out your own system, but have that be like where you want to go because getting up every day and thinking, oh, I need to post something that actually takes a lot more time because the thinking of what you need yeah. to post is the thing that takes a lot of time. Right. So when you do your pre-thinking, then the posting is not going to be as time consuming. Mm-hmm. And then then you're also making sure you get the third, third, third. Exactly. Instead, before you know, all you do is real of I don't know, nose wax things, and it's another one, and it's another one, and it's an ear wax. Oh, it's a, you know, so it changes up the, your content. So yeah, I like that idea. Absolutely. Ensure your scheduling, yeah. And it, it, like, so there's another school of thought that says, you know, when you're creating content, to create it with what, with the intention of what you want it to do. So if your intention is that you want people to go to your profile, 
Think about that while you're creating your content. What is it that will make them do that? Think about, you know, what it is you want, and then you create your content based on that. But that, again, it takes time to be intentional with your content. So when you carve out that time, I think you will have a better return on your investment. You're still putting in time. Over, eventually, it'll be less time that you're putting in when you have your system in place, and it's going to be you know, more bang for your buck, basically, where you're, you're going to get more engagement with your intentional social media planning. Right. Love that. All right. So which leads us to number three, which is engage with your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so explain that. Yes. What does mean? <laughs> this in my mind is number one. This is the most important thing you should do, but really in the order of, you know, how to frame it. I put it on in the third because, you know, you're thinking about your content, you plan out your content. Let's say you you've gotten to a system where you've now planned out your content for the next two weeks, for the next month, it doesn't matter, but it's pre-planned for you. Then you still have to go on social media and engage with your audience. And by that, I mean, you have to respond to comments. If anyone comments on your posts, of course, you have to respond to DMs. With those ones, a lot of the platforms have automated responses because you're busy, you're doing your business. You don't have time to always respond right away to a message. Have an automated message that says you'll get back to them within 24 to 48 hours, whatever it is you want to say, but that gives that direct immediate response. But the thought, is that reasonable of a response time, 24 to 48 hours that we're in such a society that expects instant you know what? That's why I recommend that you you set up a, an an automated oh, if so you the set it up. Got it. Exactly. It sets the expectation. It's like I've, I've seen you, but I can't respond to you right now. Right. Uh, you know, okay. you can be cute about it. You can be like, I'm in with a client. I'm probably in with a client doing an amazing facial. Right. I'll talk to you within a day, whatever it is. Like it, you can. That's you can such a good it. idea. It could be really in the. Again, you're you're engaging with your client story, I'm doing a waxing or whatever it may be that you're servicing of your business or with the client right now, or whatever it may be, you can actually change it up too, right? One month you have one message, another month you do another message when you're doing all your planning, maybe. I, I love like it. That. Yeah. Like Christmas time, you can, whatever it is, like I, you right. can really be, show your personality and make it per, like not personal, but like unique to you. Like yeah. it's your message to your, to your clients. That's a big one with, with like, I've seen on social media where you see what people are doing and there's some things they do. It's like, it's just not me. I can't do that. That's not who I am. So I'm going to still be who I am, but I just love how they are. So I could totally see them have something really funny in their messages. Pretty direct stuff, I would imagine, because some of the stuff that I see and they're joking and, you know, their loudness about it. And that's great. I, I think it's awesome. If that's not who you are, then you can't be trying to be that because it just doesn't come out in the same manner as them. I love that point. Actually, I haven't don't have that on the list. But that's a, a, a sub point that we should make is to be authentic to really show up as yourself. Because you look like it can be a little intimidating when you go on social media, there's some people that have a lot of followers, and they're making great content that might not be you. I think there's enough to go around for everybody. There's a, a person that is going to jive and click with you. So you have to show up as yourself and don't try to, I mean, you, you can try things because you have to know what works and what doesn't know. But when you try them, try them from a place of authenticity. So adapt it to you and your personality and how you show up for your people in the treatment room. You should show up for them online as well. Right. I had listened to one podcast and this one lady, they said that their, their salon spa is other than I think their facial and of course waxing, it's the kind of an open concept and their chair, I believe in there too. And they got the, and they're loud and they talk about private things and everyone laughs and it's a whole thing. She is that way. So that's who I am. And this is why I post the way and she's that way in her, in everything. So what you see on social media, I love this. What you see on social media is what you can expect when you walk into my salon and spa. I love it because 
that is so she was cute. like polite on social media or you know and then they walk in and they get this like atmosphere it would you would be attracting the wrong clientele yeah and, and she said i want to make sure if that person who's very private and and is not about that isn't shocked and horrified because <laughs> like my clients talk about raunchy stuff and it's like oh my like i was like wow but at least she's authentic in everything she does so no surprises there and i love that that's such a such a great way to 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 follow up with your own strategies and what you're going to yeah. do it's like an extension of your vibe in your in your spa in your treatment yeah. whatever it is it has to be an extension of it like this is your your online presence or your advertise whatever it is it has to reflect what you're going to actually be like and provide I think another another important part of the engagement is besides en engaging and responding from your own page and your own account is to actually go and, you know, comment on other people's posts, respond to other uh, likes and engage with the people, the people, whoever it is you follow, engage with them because you are asking people to engage with you. You have to give. So you have to engage. And that, again, builds relationships. It builds yeah. online relationships. It increases your visibility because if you're commenting on somebody's post, then their audience is going to see your comment. Maybe it'll be in pique their interest and then they'll see your page and do it again from a place of authenticity where you are engaging with uh, other with people you follow because you want to. And that can, you know, that can be time consuming. You don't have to do it every single day, but do carve out some time for that. It is very important. Ironically, the fallout of that is a positive one because many times I've heard this story where people connect other parts of the province or states or countries. And before you know it, they're engaging together. They're now creating content together. They're cross promoting is what that's called yeah. and hitting a bigger audience, right? So but it all started with just like you said, an engagement and something made it click and it brought in something more. It's like they're going to go to a show like, you know, in another part of your country, wherever it may be, which province or different city. And they happen to live there and say, like, hey, I'm going to be there. Do you want to meet for coffee or see you there? Are you going? And and it just it's, it's connections and relationships and all aspects, basically what you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Build your community online right? We have that. And that's the, that's the uniqueness of social media. You know, in the past when you could only advertise in a newspaper or on a billboard, it was one way. It's a one-way communication. Now you can do the two-way communication. And that's, I think sometimes we forget that when we're just constantly, oh, I got, just got to post. I just got to post. No, it's even yeah. more important to engage than it is to post. I'm going to say it might not be a popular thing, but okay. I think it is more important. <laughs> Well, and I'm sure being this in your background, I mean, even though you were in, well, you're still in the beauty industry, but you're focusing on on that marketing communication side of things that you've learned that it can change and you have to Absolutely. be ready to change with it. And with that ever world of this immediate things happening, that's why I think it changes so quickly too, because our audiences are demanding different things or noticing different things. Exactly. And I think that's, you know, it brings it back to that authenticity piece where I think if you're building a community, if your followers are, you know, trusting you, they're building that relationship with you, that actually gives you a foundation of a little bit of stability when there is changes and fluctuations, because you've built it on trust and re relationships versus right. surface things. Mm hmm. So my my fourth point that kind of lends into this, which is collaborations and partnerships. And by this, I don't mean like, you know, influencer collaborations or anything that costs, cost, is going to cost you any money because you touched on it. It could be just commenting on somebody's post that you like, and then you cross promote each other. It could also be you go out to your local coffee shop, you take a picture while you're there or a picture of the coffee and tag them. They now have noticed you. They're going to, you know, comment on it. They might return the favor, whatever it is. Now you've just expanded your audience, but you're also building your community. So you take your in-person community. So your local neighborhood, other businesses that you could align yourself with, and you move those relationships online by visiting the businesses, taking some pictures and tagging them. 
Absolutely. Love it. Yeah. And I think the my last point is social media advertising. <laughs> I don't know how people feel about this, but I'll tell you that engagement on social media, organic engagement on social media on all platforms has drastically been going down. Especially so explain, explain what that means, organic. Yeah. So that means just from posting and uh, engaging with just from the stuff that you're posting, whether it's posts, okay. yourselves, reels, whatever it is, that posting and having that interaction with your client, with your audience, that's called like organic engagement, that is down. And wow, out of all platforms, the most is Facebook. Like Facebook, it's like 0.07% is your engagement rate, which is so low. Wow. So, Having, if you're new and you really kind of want to start building a little bit of recognition online, I do recommend that you look at social media advertising. It's not that intimidating. It can be as simple as, you know, promoting a post that you've already done. You if On Instagram, it just says boost post and you can click it. Instagram will, you know, can build an audience for you, or you can build it based on, you know, your, where your location, your target for your age range for your customers. I would recommend that you play around with that. It can be as little as $3 a day. So it's it's really the cheapest form of marketing that has a high return, even if it's just in reach, just to get your, your name and your, your business out there in front of a lot of people. With that, I think, I think we can add on is that I know some people who have done this, they just hit boost and like, well, I don't know what's happening. Like, but you go back in and look at the analytics of it and it yeah. should tell you if you don't understand what those analytics are, you can Google it, right? Because and that's part of the thing is if you are going to go that route, I really do recommend you've got to take that extra step and investigate, okay, I've had this many people look at it, had this many people comment about it. So what worked and one, one way you do it has nothing hardly and the other one you're like oh my god that one did well and you don't even know why well that's it you got to think well what did I do differently and I think it's really important that people analyze you have to learn you most of the people today in the beauty industry a lot are doing their own thing out of either renting a room or out of their homes or by themselves and you need to it's a lot you've taken on and you have to look at it. it's not just about servicing people if you're trying to build a business you have to take the time out and do it. I mean, I mean, that was one thing I did was I scheduled out. I mean, if you saw my old agenda, then it was like you wrote it all. I had to write it all down because I could just open and look. <laughs> I mean, I even put my kids in it because I would forget. It's like, oh my God, I gotta go pick them up. Oh my God. People would laugh. It's like I'm serious. I'm so focused. You know, I wear my hat. Like yeah. I, I still use that analogy. Like, you know, you're maybe you're you have a partner, maybe you have kids, your business. You have maybe, I don't know, loved ones you're taking care of, whatever it may be. And okay, put your hat on. And when you enter the, that hat life that you're in right then and there, you have to focus on that mm -hmm. and then remove it, throw it away, put it to the side. Don't throw it away, put it to the side and then yeah, put your new hat on, right? And that that for me is what kept me in that structure of planning. So and if I planned out Monday mornings was the morning that I spent two hours planning my marketing and strategies whatever that looked like, I, that's what I did. And there was no bending that unless emergency, of course, things happen, mm. but you have to stick to that. And one thing, like I said, over the years was like, people would always, oh, just boost it, boost your ad. And I'd be like, it can't just be that though. There's gotta be something more to this, right? Now you become a marketing person on top of your waxing career. <laughs> yeah. I, I love what you said about booking the time. This cannot be so like you have to take it seriously like this is marketing your business right so carving out that time if it's weekly of course I think even not just your advertised content every post that you make at the end of the week or at the end of the month you can go into each platform and you can see the analytics see what did well see what didn't do well don't do the things that didn't do well you know do less of those <laughs> do more of the things that did well that's how you you kind of keep up because Right. You have a plan, but you have to be agile. You have to change because it's a moving, fast moving world that we, especially the social media world, you, you can't just be set in one way. 
I have a question for you. There's mm -hmm. time when I went to book, pre-book, when a post was going to go live. And it had the recommendation times. And sometimes I would look at that and go, tomorrow at 11 p.m.? Really? So are you saying to, I know it sounds crazy to me, but trust them, trust them, because this is their, their, what's the word, algorithms, their, this is what they do well, and this is what made them so big, is because they know what's looking. So don't look at that. If you're, if you're going to go that route, just, you know, believe, be a believer. Yeah. I think so. And I think, I mean, if you're using the meta business suite, it has recommended posting times based on your yeah. audience activity. Um, a lot of third party scheduling apps will have that too. They will let you know when your audience is most active online. They know. And I would, I definitely always go by the recommendation of the active times, but think about it. A lot of people, I've been guilty of being on my phone, on social media at 11 o'clock at night because everything else is done in my day. And now I got time to scroll. So I do, I would trust it, but I would also analyze it, go back and see if it worked. So, and on that note, because it's so important to schedule ahead, a lot of times it's like, it's, it's happened to me where I want to post something, get it out there right away. And when I look at those, like they're saying to wait a few days at 6 p.m. Like, yeah, but I need this out now. So that's another reason why you'd want to look ahead. So you're planning out getting the right time, the right audience. That's why the last minute stuff doesn't work. And I can say that, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what? And the stuff happens. So if you have to do it and you want it out now, that's fine. Repost it again. So you can yeah. re recycle your content. You don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel every single time. Share it as a story, Sh you know, just change okay. up the way that you deliver that information to, to, to your audience. So much information. It's a lot. And I think the biggest thing is that it's also trial and error. So mm -hmm. you need to figure out what's going to work for you and your audience and real the there's these things I mentioned these are best practices everybody follows them in terms of like best practice you have to adapt it to you and your audience and you see what's working for you and what isn't and you adjust accordingly hopefully that helps <laughs> it's not a straight answer <laughs> no yeah and no it's being realistic of what this is if if, if there was an exact then Everybody would have that perfect life of marketing and advertising, right? It's not, it's not like that. Exactly. And it's never been. I mean, the world of exactly. marketing has never been an exact science. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But that's it. I only have those five points. But, you know, I encourage if, you know, have they tried something that has worked for them or something that hasn't worked or if they found benefit from any of this, we'd love to hear it. Yes, absolutely. And that's the whole point of, of us doing what we're doing is we're trying to give out resources to people because we know things are costly. And, and if you do have a budget that you can work towards to hire someone of, like yourself, Doreen, right? It's, then that comes with time and maybe you can plan ahead. If you really don't have the time, it's not working for you, then look at how you can put a little bit aside so that maybe you can get a professional person to help you with it, right? But I mean, these are what we're doing. Yeah, this is this is great. I love this. And I know you've, you've just touched on it. I know there's way more. Oh gosh. Great. Really there is, but I think that's part of it. Like all the information is available to you online, but it's overwhelming. There is so much information that sometimes if you go to look, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So even right. if you just pick one thing and say, this yeah. is something I'm going to do, even if it's just like, I'm just going to focus on being consistent then just focus on, do what you can. And I say consistency because really, you know, start start there and engage with your audience and then you can build it out and you show yourself some, you know, compassion and grace because it is time consuming. It's somebody's full-time job. <laughs> so do it within your capacity. Yeah. I think too, like you touched on that, that's someone's full-time job out there. So if you're a, a, a one person entrepreneur and, and you're trying to do this and you see others, I know some people who are um, just themselves doing the work as an esthetician or lash tech or nail tech, whatever it is. And their social media is outstanding. 
you need to talk to them. They spend a lot of time and they plan out. And if they have a cancellation, a last minute thing, they will focus and say, oh, I've got an hour. I'm going to do this now. And they they just, they're on task. They don't just sit around. So what am I going to do now? Well, I'll just go on my phone. You know, mm-hmm. and just do, no, they're business. They're, they're thinking, what can I do right now? I yeah. got myself a window of opportunity. And I think that's a big part is when you're starting to compare or look at what others are doing, you don't know the, the back behind the scene and when they're doing it. I know one that, I mean, she was busy all day long. So, and then she'd come home, make supper, put the kids to bed, and then she would carve out. At 3 a.m., she would get up because she wanted to work out and do her social and then be ready for her kids. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's dedicated. I, I can't believe it. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. I really love what you just said about reach out to them. I've been, I don't know if you and I were talking about this, but I've been harping on this a little bit about how there's enough to go around for everybody that instead of competing, we need to be collaborating. So if you yes. have a tech who's doing an amazing job online, don't look at her or him as a, as a competition, like competition and that, envy. Right? Out. a lot of people are more than willing to share. Maybe they're, they're busy and they might not be able to get back to you right away. But you never know unless you try and just say, I love your social. I'm struggling. Any tips you can, whatever it is, you again, from a place of authenticity, but that's how you build relationships. And that's how you learn what's working for other people. Cause it could be very unique to your, to your profession. Like if it's nails or yeah. lashes. And you would need to offer something to them for sure. So you build that relationship and you build that trust, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe it, your nail tech, but you see a lash tech doing an amazing, I don't know. I know one that she gave her service for free to work with someone as her mentor. Just oh, in the industry. That. Yeah, in the industry. So she got better at her technique of what she was doing. It was actually for lashes, but this lady also did facials. So she said, hey, I'll do your facials if you help me with my technique. Oh, right? that's so, a great idea. That reminds me like in person, my friend was a hair well, she is a hairstylist, yeah. but we used to trade services. She'd do my hair. I'd do a pedicure or something for her. So this mm-hmm. would translate to an online relationship too. Yeah, exactly. As long as you live close by. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Awesome. Well, it's been a wealth of information. Yeah, exactly. I'd love to hear if someone, like, we'd love to know if you haven't done this before and you're trying it, let us know how you're doing. Because it's, you know, we want to keep giving out information in that and we'll pass it along. Or maybe you're a veteran at this and there was something you you switched up and what worked for you that way, what didn't work for you. I mean, this, this is how we, like you said, I, as much as we're competitive, right? And we all have our own businesses in that. But at the same time, it's a professional environment and you have to build those reputations. I mean, I still have relationships with people that own spas in my town and we became friends throughout the time and we just kept it professional we would you know make sure our ethics were in line and what we would do and and I think that's a huge part when I tell people after the fact I mean this is years ago when I owned my day spa that you know I would work with other people in the industry and they'd be like really you guys were like direct to even the product line we carried and I said yeah that's actually it took it took a while for people to trust in that, but then it comes around and you have life lifetime friendships. Then you can complain and about things going on in your business, but you know, have each other there, right? And it, it was a huge part of my day to day. So yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. having the social media side, you just have a bigger audience now, a bigger team, a bigger team out there to to you know put your head on their shoulder. Exactly. Yeah. It can be all over the world. Yeah, exactly. Well, awesome. Okay. Well, thanks, Jereen. Thanks for sharing all that. I love that. Yeah. And please reach out if you guys have any questions or comments. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening to Beauty Babble. 